The West thought the nuclear race was over, until Russia built this. In this video, we're diving deep into a story that's unfolding quietly inside Siberia, one that could change everything we know about nuclear power. You'll discover how Russia's latest experiment, the Brest AOD-300 reactor, might transform waste into fuel, defy Western energy models, and challenge the very foundation of the global energy order. Stay tuned, because what you're about to hear goes far beyond electricity. For decades, nuclear energy has been both a symbol of progress and a source of fear. The world built thousands of reactors, all following the same basic recipe, use enriched uranium fuel, slow down the neutrons with water, produce electricity, and bury the leftovers deep underground. But that design leaves behind a mountain of waste and wastes almost 99% of uranium's potential energy. Now, deep in the heart of Siberia, Russia believes it has the answer to this century-old problem. Behind the guarded fences of the Siberian Chemical Combine lies a project unlike any other, a bold experiment called the Pilot Demonstration Energy Complex, home to a futuristic reactor known as the BRSTOD-300. It's not just a new machine. It's the cornerstone of what Russia claims will be a closed nuclear fuel cycle, where nothing is wasted and every atom is reused. Let's rewind the clock for a moment, because to understand the magnitude of what's happening in Sivers, you have to know how we got here. Since the dawn of the atomic age, most of the world's nuclear plants have used what's called thermal reactors. These systems rely on moderators, often water, to slow down neutrons so that they can efficiently split uranium-235 atoms. The process works, but there's a catch. Uranium-235 is only about 0.7% of all natural uranium. The rest, uranium-238, just sits there, mostly unused. So while a thermal reactor lights up cities and powers industries, it leaves behind spent fuel loaded with plutonium and long-lived radioactive waste that must be stored for thousands of years. It's a bit like buying a tank of fuel and using just one drop before throwing the rest away. And yet, for decades, that's been the status quo. But in the shadows of the Cold War, scientists across the world began dreaming of something different, a way to harness that wasted energy, to recycle used fuel, and even create new fuel from what was once considered waste. This was the birth of the fast neutron reactor concept. Unlike thermal reactors, fast reactors don't slow down neutrons. They let them stay fast, colliding at high energy levels. This single change opens the door to something revolutionary. Fast reactors can convert uranium-238, the most common isotope of uranium, into plutonium-239, which itself can be used as fuel. In short, a fast reactor doesn't just consume energy, it can create it. Imagine that, a machine that burns waste and breeds new energy at the same time. This idea of a breeder reactor isn't new. The US, France, Japan, and the Soviet Union all tried their hands at developing such systems through the 20th century. Most failed due to cost, technical complexity, or political pressure after nuclear accidents like Chernobyl and Fukushima. But Russia never fully abandoned the dream. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, its scientists kept refining the technology through the BN series reactors, notably the BN600 and BN800, both sodium-cooled fast reactors that achieved impressive fuel efficiency and safety records. These prototypes gave Russia something no other country had, decades of hands-on experience with fast neutron systems. Now, that experience is culminating in something extraordinary, the Brest EOD-300, a generation IV reactor that Rosatom, Russia's state nuclear corporation, describes as the first of its kind. So, what makes the BRST OD300 so different? First, it's coolant. Instead of water or the sodium used in earlier fast reactors, the BRAST uses lead, a heavy, non reactive metal with a boiling point over 1,700 degrees Celsius. This means the reactor can operate at high temperatures while staying at low pressure, eliminating the risk of steam explosions and improving safety dramatically. Lead also absorbs radiation, offering a natural shield around the core. Second, it's fuel. 
Most nuclear reactors rely on oxide fuel, pellets made from uranium dioxide. But Brasti's engineers took a different path. They developed a nitride fuel made from uranium and plutonium nitrides, which has a much higher density and better thermal conductivity. This allows the reactor to run hotter, more efficiently, and to reuse spent materials more easily. Third, its design philosophy. Traditional breeder reactors used a blanket of uranium around the core to breed plutonium. The Brest OD300 eliminates that outer breeding zone, instead breeding and burning within the same core region. This dramatically reduces the production of weapons-grade plutonium, a major step toward non-proliferation safety. But the real magic isn't just inside the reactor, it's in the ecosystem surrounding it. The Boreast OD300 is part of a larger experimental facility known as the Pilot Demonstration Energy Complex, PDEC. Think of it as a mini-city dedicated to the entire nuclear fuel cycle. At one end, a fuel fabrication plant manufactures the reactor's uranium-plutonium nitride fuel. At the other, a reprocessing facility handles used fuel, separates reusable materials, and sends them back for refabrication. Everything happens in one place. Nothing leaves the loop. This closed cycle design could make nuclear energy nearly self-sustaining. In theory, once a small initial batch of fuel is loaded, the system can keep regenerating its own fuel almost indefinitely. Waste becomes resource, the fuel cycle becomes circular. Construction of this ambitious system began officially in 2016, with major physical work starting around June 2021. By January 2024, the reactor's 165-ton steel base plate had been installed, and by early 2025, the pilot fuel fabrication plant in Severs had already started producing test assemblies of nitri fuel. Rosatom says the first full startup is planned for 2026 or 2027, depending on licensing approvals. If it works, it could change everything. Right now, the world's nuclear industry burns through thousands of tons of uranium every year and leaves mountains of waste behind. A closed cycle system like BREST could turn that waste into usable fuel, cutting waste storage needs by up to 90% and extending uranium resources for centuries. It can also make countries less dependent on uranium mining, a business dominated by just a few nations, including Kazakhstan, Canada, and Australia. And that's where the geopolitical stakes rise. Russia isn't just trying to solve a scientific puzzle, it's trying to redraw the global energy map. By developing reactors that don't rely heavily on imported uranium and can regenerate their own fuel, Moscow could gain enormous leverage, especially among countries looking for long-term energy independence. Imagine a future where Russia doesn't just sell oil or gas, but complete nuclear ecosystems, reactors, refueling, reprocessing, and servicing, all under Rosatom's umbrella. To put it plainly, whoever masters the fast reactor closed fuel cycle model could dominate the next era of global energy. But as with all big technological leaps, the risks are real. Engineers are still grappling with lead corrosion on reactor surfaces, the complex chemistry of nitri fuel, and the challenge of ensuring safety under high temperatures. Then there's the economic question. Can this technology compete with cheaper renewables and traditional reactors? Still, the potential rewards are so massive that Russia seems determined to push forward, no matter the obstacles. And while Western nations have mostly slowed or abandoned their fast reactor projects, Russia is building the infrastructure piece by piece, turning Seversk into the epicenter of a possible nuclear revolution. But here's where things get even more intriguing. The story doesn't end with Bure ST OD300. This is just the prototype. Rosatom has already hinted at a much larger version, the BRST-1200, a reactor four times more powerful that could one day power entire regions or supply industrial-scale energy for hydrogen production, desalination, and beyond. That's the dream. But what happens if the dream succeeds and others can't keep up? Because if Russia's bet works, it could flip the energy hierarchy overnight. Let's enter the next phase of this story, where science fuses with strategy and technology becomes a geopolitical weapon. The Brest OD300 may appear as a scientific triumph, but beneath its innovation lies a far greater ambition, 
to reshape who controls the 21st century's energy order. For Russia, the Burest OD300 project emerges at a pivotal time in global energy history. As the world moves away from fossil fuels, nations are in a fierce race to secure clean, reliable, and independent energy sources. Europe is striving to recover from its dependence on Russian gas, China is expanding its nuclear capabilities, and the United States is modernizing its outdated reactors. In this global contest, leadership in next-generation nuclear technology could determine who controls the future energy landscape. Russia's strength lies in its pursuit of a closed fuel cycle. Unlike traditional nuclear reactors that follow a use and dispose model, the Brest OD300 can recycle its own spent fuel directly on site. This innovation removes reliance on imported uranium or foreign enrichment agreements, creating a self-sufficient nuclear ecosystem. Through its state corporation Rosatom, Russia can provide complete energy packages, power generation, fuel supply, and waste management, all under its control. Each export deal, from Turkey's Akliu to Egypt's Aldaba and Bangladesh's Rupur, extends Moscow's influence for decades through long-term maintenance and fuel contracts. By mastering fast reactors and fuel recycling, Russia isn't just selling technology, it's consolidating geopolitical leverage. If successful, this model could append the global uranium market, reducing demand while shifting power toward nations capable of sustaining closed fuel cycles, with Russia leading the charge. Beyond strategy, the BRST reactor represents a breakthrough in nuclear waste management. Traditional reactors produce highly radioactive waste that must be stored for tens of thousands of years. Brasti's fast reactor technology can burn long-lived isotopes like plutonium and minor actinides, transforming them into shorter-lived materials. Essentially, it consumes much of its own waste, reducing environmental impact and the ethical burden of leaving hazardous legacies for future generations. However, such innovation also raises concerns. The ability to recycle plutonium brings inevitable non-proliferation risks. While BREST avoids producing weapons-grade plutonium through external breeding blankets, its reprocessing facilities still handle sensitive materials. Rosatom insists that its integrated system prevents diversion by keeping plutonium mixed and safeguarded, yet critics warn that any reprocessing could open proliferation pathways, especially in unstable political regions. Thus, a critical question arises. Can the world embrace a technology that could resolve energy and waste challenges while complicating nuclear security? For Russia, the answer is already clear. It is moving ahead. The Brest OD300 serves as a prototype for a larger vision. Once validated, Rosatom plans to expand to the Brest T1200, a 1,200-megawatt commercial reactor capable of powering an entire city. This design will maintain the same key features, liquid-lead cooling, advanced mitri fuel, and an integrated recycling system, but its ambitions stretch beyond electricity. Russia envisions using such reactors for hydrogen production, industrial heating, and desalination, embedding nuclear technology at the core of a new industrial era. This development signals a shift in global energy politics. The future may no longer be dominated by nations with oil fields or gas pipelines, but by those that control the nuclear fuel loop. If Russia begins exporting full reactor plus cycle systems, client nations could become dependent on Russian software, technology, and specialized fuels. Energy, once again, becomes a diplomatic tool, binding nations into long-term strategic relationships that enhance Moscow's global influence. The United States and its allies have taken notice. Washington is pushing next-generation projects like TerraPower's sodium-cooled reactor and the Department of Energy's versatile test reactor, while China accelerates its own CFR-600 fast reactor program. Yet unlike these developing projects, Russia's Brest EOD-300 is already operationally advancing. The Seversk facility has produced test fuel, and construction continues under international oversight. Each milestone brings Russia closer to completing the world's first industrial-scale closed nuclear fuel cycle, a potential game-changer in global energy. Ultimately, BREST represents more than power generation. It embodies Russia's bid to reshape global energy influence. 
As Western nations pivot to renewables, Russia is constructing an atomic empire built on sustainability and self-reliance. The BRSD reactor transforms nuclear waste into resource, short-term supply into long-term stability. Whether it achieves full success or not, it has already reignited the race for nuclear supremacy, proving that the next great energy struggle will revolve not around oil or gas, but around mastery of the atom itself.